After the inauguration in 1993, the Clintons fired the White House Travel Office employees, allowing their wealthy Hollywood friends to take over the lucrative travel business. This led to investigations by the FBI, DOJ, GAO, Oversight Committee, and the Whitewater Independent Council. The Clintons claimed the firings were due to financial misdeeds, but the employees were cleared on all counts. Hillary Clinton allegedly played a central role in the firings, yet in her sworn testimony, she claimed she was not involved. The Independent Council found this to be factually inaccurate and that she made factually false statements. The Clintons were forced to remove their friends and reinstate the previous employees. Vince Foster, the longtime friend and companion of Hillary Clinton, was significantly involved in several Clinton scandals. Due to the strange circumstances surrounding his death in 1993, an investigation ensued. Before the police arrived, Clinton staffers illegally removed boxes of documents on Whitewater and presumably Travelgate and other sensitive issues. President Clinton put his wife in charge of the most expensive program in the country. There was a national outrage that the unelected, unqualified First Lady was going to design America's health care system. In a 1993 interview, Hillary Clinton admitted, I am not an expert on health care. I'm not somebody who has studied it. Hillary Clinton kept the Presidential Task Force on National Health Care Reform shrouded in such secrecy that a federal judge threatened to hold the administration in contempt. Two years later, the health care plan was a 1,342-page nightmare, including gatekeepers, health alliances, purchasing cooperatives, new and higher taxes, and restrictions on choosing doctors. Physicians, hospitals, large and small businesses, insurance companies, Democrats, Republicans, and the general public rejected the program, and it failed disastrously. The General Accounting Office put a price tag of $32 million on Hillary Clinton's health care fiasco. For dishonesty, Hillary Clinton and others were fined $450,000. Court costs to taxpayers were $725,000. In 1996, with Hillary Care fresh in their minds, Americans voted both the Senate and the House into Republican hands for the first time in over four decades. In 1994, President Clinton's Attorney General Janet Reno initiated an investigation focusing on fraud accusations against the Clintons regarding their real estate venture, Whitewater Development Corporation, co-owned with their friends Jim and Susan McDougall. Hillary Clinton was the central figure and the probe revealed pervasive conflicts of interest between the Rose Law Firm, where Hillary Clinton was partner, and its client, Madison Guarantee, owned by Clinton business partner, Jim McDougall. Hillary Clinton claimed billing records, subpoenaed and critical to the investigation, were lost. It is presumed they were stolen from Vince Foster's office the night he died. 19 months later, following the Clinton's acquittal, many of the missing records reappeared in the Clinton's residence. As they were covered with Hillary Clinton's fingerprints, she fell under suspicion of obstruction of justice. Their business partner, Susan McDougall, refused to testify against the Clintons, assuring they were not charged. Susan McDougall went to prison for her silence, but was pardoned by President Clinton. Fifteen Clinton associates were convicted of 40 federal crimes related to Whitewater. The Independent Counsel's report highlighted the president's abundant and calculating lies under oath, obstruction of justice, and abuse of power. During this case, many other alleged abuses were uncovered. The four-and-a-half-year expanded investigation cost taxpayers $145 million. Hillary Clinton's trades in cattle futures raised suspicions of improprieties as her very first trade of $5,000 quickly turned into over $490,000. She refused to release her tax returns for the years in question. Hillary Clinton insisted that she made all the investment decisions herself, 
the investigation proved her trades were actually placed by her friend James Blair through the brokerage firm Refco. James Blair was outside counsel for Tyson Foods, the largest employer in Arkansas, which is state regulated. The perception was Mrs. Clinton received preferential treatment and incredible financial returns as a way to garner favor with her husband, then governor of Arkansas. Refco was investigated and paid the largest fines in the history of the exchange. The Clinton administration improperly requested and received FBI background reports on 900 Republican officials. Hillary Clinton allegedly initiated the request to add data to her enemies list leading to three separate investigations in 1996. In testimony, the White House Personnel Security Director refused to name Hillary Clinton as the source of the request, and he was forced to resign. Hillary Clinton claimed she was guiltless and was called a congenital liar in the New York Times. The fund was established so individuals or companies hoping to garner favor with the president could help pay the Clintons' endless legal bills. In 1996, the Justice Department investigated campaign fundraising abuses and cover-ups by the Clintons in connection with an effort by China to influence administration policies. In violation of U.S. law, Agents for the Chinese government and military funneled millions into President Clinton's re-election campaign, the Clinton Legal Defense Fund, and the DNC. The DOJ's report stated, a pattern of events suggests a level of knowledge within the White House, including the President's and First Lady's offices, concerning the injection of foreign funds into the re-election effort. The Clintons were accused of using the IRS to harass their enemies, including Republican politicians, the White House Travel Office, the NRA, Judicial Watch, the Heritage Foundation, and other conservative organizations. A senior IRS official admitted that Clinton opponents were singled out for tax audits. Also audited were Bill Clinton's female accusers, including Jennifer Flowers, Paula Jones, Juanita Broderick, and Elizabeth Ward Grayson. As he was leaving office in January 2001, President Clinton pardoned 450 people for crimes ranging from cocaine trafficking to kidnapping and terrorism. Several pardons personally benefited Hillary Clinton and were investigated for direct ties to her New York Senate bid. Mark Rich, a billionaire fugitive, owed the government over $160 million and was charged with tax evasion, wire fraud, racketeering, and trading with Iran. Rich's ex-wife, Denise Rich, a close friend of the Clintons, donated over $600,000 to the Clinton Presidential Library just prior to the pardon. Mrs. Rich also gave $14,000 to the Clinton Legal Defense Fund and $135,000 to Hillary Clinton's Senate campaign. The New Square Four were elders of a Republican voting Hasidic community convicted of defrauding the government of millions of dollars. Candidate Clinton met with their grand rabbi. Hillary Clinton received their votes and the New Square Four received their pardons. Hillary Clinton claimed, I did not play any role whatsoever in the pardons. Hillary Clinton's brother, lawyer Hugh Rodham, charged high fees to use his family influence to obtain presidential pardons. Carlos Vignali, a Los Angeles drug lord, paid Rodham over $500,000 and his sentence for cocaine trafficking was commuted. Almond Braswell, a scam artist, paid Rodham over $250,000 and was pardoned for defrauding senior citizens of millions of dollars. Fighting for Puerto Rican independence, the FALN exploded 138 bombs in New York City, Chicago, and Puerto Rico. During a 10-year reign of terror, 13 innocent people were killed and over 80 were maimed. 
New York City Councilman Jose Rivera met with Hillary Clinton proposing pardons for FALN members in return for Puerto Rican support in her Senate race. Two days later, President Clinton pardoned 16 FALN terrorists. These pardons were condemned by Democrats and Republicans, the House and Senate, the FBI, the U.S. Attorney, the Federal Bureau of Prisons, and the Fraternal Order of Police. Another probe into Clinton wrongdoing ensued. When Congress requested additional information, President Clinton claimed executive privilege, preventing anyone involved with the pardons from testifying. Hillary Clinton claimed no involvement in or prior knowledge of the decision. Former Democratic President Jimmy Carter called these shameless pardons disgraceful. The largest political fundraiser in U.S. history became the largest election fraud in history. In the year 2000, the fundraiser for Hillary Clinton's New York Senate race was attended by 1,300 people, including the Hollywood elite and the Democratic leadership. In violation of federal election statutes, an individual, Peter Paul, financed the entire event. Peter Paul was also a convicted cocaine trafficker. In violation, Hillary Clinton was involved with the solicitation of funds and the coordination of the gala. In violation, Hillary Clinton requested in writing an additional $150,000 from Peter Paul in untraceable securities. The Clinton campaign's filings with the Federal Elections Committee stated the event only cost $500,000. The actual price tag was $1.5 million. Senator Clinton was fined over $50,000 for purposely underreporting the cost of the event. In another campaign finance fraud, Hillary Clinton ignored FBI warnings and accepted over $900,000 from scam artist and felon Norman Sue. Hillary Clinton's Senate tenure was undistinguished. In seven years, she introduced only three minor bills which became law including the naming of a post office. She helped secure millions in federal assistance for a New York developer. Ethics questions arose when the businessman donated over $120,000 to the Clinton Foundation. Senator Clinton did not support English as the official language of the United States government, and she enthusiastically voted for the Iraq War Resolution. Hillary Clinton ignored Senate rules and reporting requirements for the hiring of staff and non-paid fellows, breaking the Senate Code of Official Conduct and hiding multiple conflicts of interest. She was investigated by the Senate Select Committee on Ethics. Hillary Clinton's long history of campaign finance abuses continued. Jeffrey Thompson and other fundraising bundlers for her failed 2008 presidential campaign pled guilty to conspiracy and campaign finance law violations. In the primaries, Democrats nominated the little-known junior Senator Obama over the well-known, scandal-ridden Hillary Clinton. In 2009, President Obama nominated Hillary Clinton as Secretary of State. In 2014, the State Department spokesperson was asked to identify one tangible achievement from Hillary Clinton's four years as Secretary of State. She responded, I am certain those who were here at the time, who worked hard on that effort, could point out one. Secretary Clinton's tenure had no signature doctrine or diplomatic breakthrough. It was, however, four more years of scandals. The Clinton State Department wasted $80 million on a U.S. consulate in northern Afghanistan, which will never be completed. Under Clinton's name, the Foreign Service gathered details on foreign diplomats, our allies and officials of the UN, including internet usernames, email addresses, credit card numbers, fingerprints, frequent flyer account numbers, and work schedules. The Clinton State Department lost approximately $6 billion due to improper filing of contracts. The FBI, CIA, and the DOJ requested that Boko Haram be designated as a terrorist group so the agencies could pursue them. Secretary Clinton declined, and the group continued its reign of terror 
including the kidnapping of 300 schoolgirls in Nigeria. A special investigator for the State Department claims probes into illegal acts by the Diplomatic Security Service and ambassadors were influenced, manipulated, or simply called off under Hillary Clinton. These include sexual assaults by State Department security officials in Beirut, endemic engagement of prostitutes by Hillary Clinton's security detail, drug use by State Department contractors in Baghdad, solicitation of child male prostitutes by U.S. Ambassador to Belgium. Secretary Clinton's spokesperson claimed Hillary Clinton had no knowledge of any of the scandals in her State Department. We learned of it from the media and don't know anything beyond what's been reported. The United States mission in Benghazi, Libya was attacked on September 11, 2012. As Hillary Clinton was Secretary of State at the time, she is at the heart of the cover-up investigation. When she finally testified to Congress four months after the attack, she famously stated, the fact is we had four dead Americans. Was it because of a protest? Or was it because guys out for a walk one night who decided they'd go kill some Americans? What difference at this point does it make? Hillary Clinton testified that she submitted all documents requested by Congress. 20 months later, and only through a Freedom of Information Act request, 41 new documents were released, including changes to Ambassador Susan Rice's talking points. More documents are still being withheld. The Presidential Records Act allows restricted access to documents for 12 years after leaving office. Now, 14 years later, the Clintons are still withholding thousands of records from the public. Over 300 Freedom of Information Act requests have been ignored, suggesting more damaging revelations about the Clintons. It is difficult to separate the Clinton's personal and political financial ventures from those of the Clinton Foundation. The New York Times expose on the Clinton Foundation details moral and fiscal chaos, shameless fundraising, and calls it mired in conflicts of interest. Run by old Clinton friends, it has been grossly mismanaged and despite enormous donations, ran multi-million dollar deficits. Already rife with conflicts of interest, the Foundation's offices are now shared by the Hillary Clinton presidential campaign. Americans can give $2,300 to presidential candidates, but there are no limits on donations to foundations. Hillary Clinton cannot legally accept campaign donations from foreigners, but no restrictions apply to foundations. Secretary of State Clinton traveled to Moscow and pressed the Russian government to purchase planes from Boeing. Two months later, contract in hand, Boeing donated $900,000 to the Clinton Foundation. The Foundation's support from foreign interests hoping to influence U.S. policy is of grave concern. Foreign donations to the Foundation increased by 70% when Hillary Clinton ran for president in 2008. Saudi Arabia has financed terrorists, has an abysmal women's rights record, and punishes homosexuality by death. And yet, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is one of the largest supporters of the Clinton Foundation. In a Clinton co-presidency, every large donation could raise suspicions of improprieties or influence peddling and lead to non-stop investigations. You have to remember, this was at the time when there was a lot of speculation about us womanizing, and I was the loyal Democrat, and I would not allow myself to believe that that was true. I just, I just thought it was all just rumor. 
Willie believes that Hillary Clinton was well aware of the tactics used by the Clinton White House to intimidate perceived enemies. Willie says two days before she was set to testify against President Clinton in the Paula Jones sexual harassment case, a stranger confronted her. We passed and he stopped and he said, hey Kathleen, did you ever find your cat? And then he said, rather ominously, um, yeah, that bullseye was a really nice cat. And that's what I thought, that something else was going on here. He stood back and he said, you're just not getting the message, are you? The Clinton attack machine immediately targeted Willie. However, there are corroborating witnesses. Jared Stern, a former Marine, later told congressional investigators he was hired to investigate Kathleen Willie during a clandestine nighttime meeting. It was late at night. He called me, asked me to meet him here in this parking garage. I met him said he had something very important to discuss. I talked to him about it, uh, discussed the tasking, and then I left to carry it out. Stern declines to discuss what he was hired to do, but Stern has admitted he was so uneasy about it that he called Willie, using an alias. I made a telephone call to Miss Willie. I left a message on her answering service indicating that I'd try again the next day. And he left a message for me saying, be careful that there were people out to get me. Jared Stern is a first-hand witness to what the, the Clintons are doing, have done, and are doing to these women. The Clintons are a unit. They share a zeal for power and a willingness to engage in any and all threat-neutralizing strategies. Legality be damned. No one will ever say what happened to Kathleen Willey was an anomaly. That M.O. can be seen throughout the Clintons political lives. It is consistent. Willie says her car was vandalized, her house broken into, and a cat's skull was left on her porch. Today, she still lives in fear. And I don't understand how any woman in this country could vote for a woman who does that to other people, who sets out to destroy and ruin the, these women who have crossed paths with Bill Clinton. They're power hungry, they stop at nothing. They stop at nothing. If you put me to work for you, I'll work to lift people up, not push them down. I finally parted company with Hillary Clinton when I saw how she was using private detectives to investigate the women who were linked to her husband. Not to change him, not to reform him, not to make him a better person but to cow the women into silence so that he could get elected president. I do not want that woman controlling the IRS or the DEA or the NSA or the FBI or the CIA. Not in a democracy, I don't. I mean, think of what it says about, about Hillary Clinton, that she was willing to put up with with his open philandering, with, with anything in a skirt who wanders before his eyesight, all for the power. Um, at least with Bill Clinton, he was just, you know, good time Charlie. Hillary's got an agenda, and she's willing to put up with that to, to be president of the United States. She, she's got a to-do list when she gets to the White House. Hillary Clinton's Machiavellian behavior, her tendency to manipulate, deceive, and destroy for personal gain, is nothing new. This woman, now a hero to feminists, gained much of her power during the Clinton presidency from her ability to deal with her husband's infidelities. Bill was always heavily involved in the policies of his administration, but he left chasing down his women and silencing them, pursuing the scandals and lying about them, escaping culpability for any of the things in their past, to Hillary. She was his Nixon. She was his evil equivalent. She was the one who made sure that nothing got to him. Uh, because she was so good at it. And she was. Hillary's mastery of the black arts of attack politics is often skillfully cloaked in layers of deniability. But when she needs money, as all candidates do, her imprudence bewilders even her most loyal supporters. The pattern is a familiar one. Huge amounts of money are raised from political insiders, lobbyists, and special interest groups and questions follow. In the summer of 2007, Hillary was forced to return nearly $900,000 from fundraiser Norman Shue. 
who is now under indictment for running a Ponzi scheme. During the White House years, it was the dirty money of a cast of characters that included Johnny Chung and Charlie Tree, both convicted of illegal campaign fundraising. I think it was Johnny Chung that said the White House was like a subway turnstile. You put the money in and you got in. And if his tokens were very large, of course. Uh, there's evidence that he collected money from a Chinese intelligence officer and they were trying to influence our elections to gain access to decision-making uh, powers in the United States so they would bend U.S. policy towards China. The campaign finance scandals were so extensive, 120 people either fled the country to avoid being in interrogated by investigators, pled the Fifth Amendment, or otherwise avoided questions. Fourteen guilty pleas came out of that. This is really stunning. Um, and it's stunning to me how the media will give her a pass and how the media pretends none of these things happen. And they accept the, the Hillary uh, operative's line, which is, well, that's, that's, that's old news. Everybody knows about it. Let's move on. Okay, we move on. Now they're laundering money through Chinese dishwashers in Chinatown in New York. I'm a little surprised somebody in the campaign didn't flag that down and say, ah, uh, dishwashers? Maximum contribution or $1,000? Um, let's look into that a little bit. Uh, the Los Angeles Times looked into it and found that they couldn't find something like a third of these uh, Chinatown contributors and that they found other people who uh, said they had no idea that they had made contributions. It looks like a clear case that somebody committed fundraising law violations and the Clinton campaign at the least did not do due diligence to try and track that down.